What did you say? Flagpole. Take your stinking bar off me, you damn dirty egg. No! You're a wizard, Harry. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. And I care! What is the deal? No, do me a favor, Captain. Go fuck yourself. Language! Why so serious? What's your favorite scary movie? I'm Vengeance. Avengers! Assemble. Brayden, I have a question for you. And Andrew, what would that question be? Where, oh where, are my CM Punk ice cream bars? Uh, they're still not here, and it's an absolute outrage. Ten years have gone by, and no CM Punk ice cream bars has hit the shelf. Didn't they? They used to have ice cream bars, didn't they? Like WWE used to do that. Dude, WWE used to fucking make drywall. Pro like, there's no telling what they didn't slap their name on. Why don't they still make ice cream bars? Like, I, I would go for a WWE ice cream bar. If they had CM Punk ice cream bars, I might just, you know, pick one of those up, because why not? I like CM Punk. Yeah, they could have Mark Henry's flavor, sexual chocolate. Yeah, they could have uh, Kane's favorite flavor, the Pyromania. They could have Matt Hardy's flavor, Pyromania Part 2. Huh. <laughs> We were talking. About they could have a. They could have a Rey Mysterio's flavor, the West Coast Pop. Ooh, they could have a Dominic Mysterio's flavor, flavor, pussy. <laughs> Man, is Dominic the best heel in WWE? Dominic, probably. Because <laughs> people kind of cheer for Roman at times. Nobody cheers for Dom. Uh, if you're going. Really, by yeah, like most hated hill in WWE, probably Dominic. Yeah, God, he's so good at it too. I don't even think that it's hated. I just think it's people love to do him. It's funny. Well, well, I'm glad that I think Dom turned heel. This was still in charge. When when did when did Triple H take over? Was it Clash of the Cast? Triple H's first pay per view, or was it uh, SummerSlam? SummerSlam. So when Dom turned. Triple H was in charge, right? Uh, I think because that happened. Was it was Clash it at Clash Castle. of the Castle? Yeah, yeah, it was at Clash of the Castle. Okay, yeah. Vince McMahon laid the groundwork, but I don't think Vince McMahon would have pulled the trigger because he thinks, "Oh, Dominic Mysterio, that that'll be like Rey Mysterio Part Two. And everybody's like, no. and, and Triple H is like, no one wants Rey Mysterio Part 2. They want Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> yeah, we have Rey Mysterio Part 2. His name is Santos Escobar. <laughs> yeah, now he's jealous that uh, Rey Mysterio doesn't want him to be Rey Mysterio number two. Yeah. Or he's upset, because, whatever. Yeah. And, I, and uh, Carlito was, was supposed to have a match with him, but that didn't even happen. So Because but, of reasons. Yeah, because uh, SmackDown. SmackDown the night before, which I'm sure everyone saw. So, we missed a week. So we didn't get to give our Survivor Series. Too bad. So sad. But you know what? We're here. We are here. And we are ready. And we are going to give our predictions on matches that already happened. Yeah, so what was your prediction for the first match that happened? Damage Control which consists of Eo Sky, Bailey, now Asuka, and, of course, Kairi Sane, which, yeah, they, they, like, added new members to Damage Control real fast, so it's like, okay, interesting. They're adding members to this faction they've been trying to make look incredibly dangerous versus the, the two top WWE Golden Girls, Bianca, Belair, Charlotte Flair, then you got three top. What do you? Oh talking? yeah, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch was in this match, which she was the only one of these women that is not on the SmackDown roster, which is why it's just like kind of confusing to me. And then Shotzi. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't know why Shotzi was in this match. No, I don't know why Shotzi Shotzi or Becky were in this match. It, you literally could have just done Bianca and Charlotte versus Damage Control, and it would have been just as believable. The way they treat these two, 
Yeah, I know. You it's could uh... put, you could have put the entire SmackDown women's roster against them, and I would have believed it if they won. That's the way they build these teams. Yeah, this is you what uh. Decapitated <laughs> Becky, or you could have decapitated Bianca Belair, and I would still believe that she would probably she, she would hit it, hit the KOD. Yeah, I would st- I would believe it because that's the way they that's the way a Bianca match goes. Yeah. So, but uh, it, because we talked about this, even though we didn't record because we were unable to, we still talked about like who was going to win these matches. And I'm I told you I don't see either of the face teams in the War Games matches losing. And didn't you say that the Hills were going to win this one? I did say the Hills were going to win because it. Why would you build damage control? This this dangerous faction just to, like this does nothing for anybody in damage control. As that yeah no and I and, and like it's Bianca and Charlotte and yeah and Becky and Be- <laughs> which Becky like you said she Becky will eat losses. Yeah, Becky isn't isn't they're not afraid they'll be like. I don't get why yeah. I don't get why they don't just do that with like more people. Like you want to know why? I think it's because it's believable if Becky Lynch falls to the bottom of the card and works her way back. Why I are think they know how to do that with? It's is it ironic or not that her and Seth are both like that? Like Seth Rollins can lose so freaking much, and like it's believable that a month later he just wins the world championship. Yeah. And it's because they're they're very they're first off they're just genuinely liked by people. They're incredible in the ring, and it's they're workhorses, you know. And yeah. it's just it, I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but it if if Bianca Belair fell to the bottom of the, I don't think WWE would know a way to bring her back up. They would just give up on her. Oh, uh, so. Y- Okay. <laughs> Maybe. I, don't, I don't. I don't think they know how. Like, because what is Bianca's character? She's super. She's twenty, twenty, uh, ten. Super team. Super Cena. Yeah, she's just the best. That's her character. That's it. Yeah, and Charlotte's character is. She's, she's a Ric Flair's and, daughter. Yeah, and she's, she's Ric Flair's daughter, and she's gonna break his sixteen-time record because no one else can. Yeah, and they're gonna. She's gonna fucking break his record. Ric Flair wrestled for like fifty, sixty fucking years, and Charlotte's gonna break his record for like a little over a decade. Like that, that forcing that record shit. I hate that so much. That is the most annoying thing I think WWE's done for Charlotte Flair. You know, if if I I take it back, I think they would. Yeah, I get it. Like, if no one else wants to, like, break it and they just, like, want Rick to keep it, whatever. I feel like that's why Cena, like, never broke it. He didn't want it. He didn't want the record. He didn't need the record. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I think I think he only won it 16 times, probably because WWE wanted him to. Probably. You know what Ric Flair says whenever somebody brings up uh, Cena tying him? Oh, that, that he didn't tie, that he has more than 16. Yeah, he has like twenty. Well, if you look at it from this from this point of view, it's actually twenty four. It's like, damn, Rick, you're such a sore loser. Oh yeah, Rick, if we look at it from uh, this point of view with purely just WWE titles, you're you're only like a two three time champ. Yeah, no joke. So shut the fuck up, okay? Just just take the flowers you've been given. Did you see? Uh, I'm pretty sure Ric Flair is all elite. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't watch the segment, but I did see that he joined AEW. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Hulk Hogan is also off. Dude, everyone's fucking over there. You know who's not over there? CM Punk. Look in my eyes. What do you see? <laughs> I am a Hulk of personality. Is there, is there anything uh, about the ones? So, so, before we... Before we get to the men's what did you think was better the men's or the women okay um as as like i'm maybe as purely a match the women's but like for the moments and stuff the men's obviously that's that's exactly what i was thinking because like the women's it it just kind of felt like they just threw a bunch of random people together for a match and there was like no story behind it which that's exactly what they did. They threw a bunch of random match. 
and there was no story behind it, but there was a lot of cool spots in that match. And the match I mean, the, the story was, was basically just a uh, damage control uh, screwing Charlotte and Bianca out of t- title matches, basically, and them being like yeah, fuck you I damage they, control. I guess they bullied. I guess they bullied Shotzi. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I I missed so the Shotzi she thing. I never saw made that. Sense. She actually made sense to be in that match. Becky Lynch, I really, I don't. Maybe there was tying her to that match. I have no idea. I didn't see a segment about Becky Lynch being in the match. It seemed uh, like Kyrie. It's Stone Charlotte and- Flair said something about like your 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 enemies can be your, your closest allies or some shit like that, and then Becky showed up. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they're building it up like they have a rivalry like John Cena, Randy Orton. I've literally watched them two uh, hug each other in the middle of the. I've watched them hug each other and cry. Like, I don't believe that they hate each other. Oh, me either. Yeah. So didn't make any sense, but whatever. Uh, uh the the. Was- the- yeah, I was going to say the coolest spot in the women's war games match, though, was probably EO with the trash can. And they made a pulley system. Don't yeah. forget. Yeah, they made, they're made. they making a pulley system! <laughs> <laughs> there was some guy, if you if you go watch the clip on YouTube, as soon as the video starts from the official WWE uh, YouTube page of the EOS guy uh, trash can spot, you hear a guy who's like, they're making a pulley system. <laughs> he screams it like as, as soon as the video starts, you hear him scream. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was very it good. It shouldn't have been as funny as it was. It no, was but funny. it's just, it's, I don't know, it's like perfect timing. Like, as they're pulling that up. I liked, uh, I liked Bianca using her hair as a match. Uh, doesn't she do that in every match? I thought it was like illegal for her to do it. Is it? Well, she had two braids this time, so she had two whips. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. I I've seen her just like whip people with her hair before. In like just she, casual matches. Kyrie Sane, dude, she's fucking crazy. I like her. I do too. I like her a lot. I hope they do something good with her. What do you think uh what do you what do you, where do you think they're gonna go with this though? With the damage control losing? Do you think like they're gonna try to kick someone out, Bailey out maybe, since she ate the pen? Uh yeah. Most likely. It's just going to be an all Japanese women faction now. And Dakota Kai. I forgot she was there. I don't know. Did, I... <laughs> Did you hear Michael Cole call Dakota Kai the lead damage control? The leader? Yeah, he called her. He said she's taken on a leadership. He said uh, over the last couple of weeks, she's taken over leadership. <laughs> what? No, I didn't hear yeah. that. I have no idea what he was talking about. I was like, I kind of forgot Dakota Kai was fucking part of this group. Well, you don't. You haven't been watching the SmackDown segments. Me either, no, apparently, I because I didn't know that. I haven't. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, but I think I think they're gonna Bailey out. I think uh, Kyrie Sane is gonna like convince Eo Sky to watch him kick Eo out. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? They kick the women's champ out. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. I know, but that'd be funny as fuck. They just kick her out. And they're like, "Fuck you! You're the weak link," and she's it's a chance. She's just holding it. She's just holding. He just the defends title. the title against all of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be a pretty cool match. A fatal four way for the women's title between. Yeah, make it a match at WrestleMania. Fatal four way, damage control. Fatal four way. Or wait. Yeah. Wait, Eo's gonna be there. Or not EO. EO is the champ. Dakota's going to be there by then. She's, she's really going to be, like, cleared by then. So, you know. Five way. She's five special way. guest referee. He's <laughs> uh, she screws EO out of the title. Yeah. She just cashes in nothing to win it. Mm-hmm. No, they, they bring back, like, uh, in, in old days of wrestling... I don't know the last time they did this. Maybe they have done it recently, and I just don't know. But, like, just some random person from backstage comes out, like a random, another superstar, 
comes out, like, just pulls off, like, their shirt, they get a referee shirt under it, and they just count the three. Oh my god, they could do a championship scramble. Oh my god, you're right. That would be, Dude, that, that would be awesome. You, <laughs> if they did a championship scramble with EO Sky and Laney, that there's no point if you ever won. There, no there won't be another WrestleMania that will ever in your mind. There's no point of me ever watching another WrestleMania again, is what you're saying. No. If, the, if, yeah. if there's, if, if there's yeah, a championship there be, scramble match with EO Sky. EO Sky in it, yeah, no. Or Rhea Ripley. There's oh, no- even better. <laughs> I like how you fucking both of the women's champions. I do like both of the women's champions. And they are both heels. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I like the heels, dude. I I like you, Becky. You, I like have Becky. You, have you noticed every champion in WWE except for Seth Rollins is a heel? Uh, yes. As of now, yes, they are. Yeah. Right? What the Wait, fuck? Well, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I almost forgot Judgment Day are high champions right now, honestly. Yeah, they, they need to do something with the tag top. Uh, I don't they really need to actually, else. like, I don't know, I guess Judgment Day is an actual tag team, but or slash faction, but they need to actually fucking keep the tag titles in the tag division. Because I'm like, I, I barely even know what WWE's tag division is right now. Yeah. They need to let fucking... They also need to have the New Day rules. The New Day to what? The New Day rules to the tag team titles. Oh, like, uh, if you're a faction, multi- like, uh, you yeah, can see, pick and choose? Yeah, Damien and Finn are the tag champs. They need oh, to yeah. Make it where Dominic, Dominic can be in a match, and JD. JD. Yeah, they can defend them. Because that would be a perfect role for them, too. Yeah, that that would be cool. I'd be I'd be down for that. Because, yeah, if you did it with like New Dominic. Day, why the fuck can't you do it with Judgment Day? Yeah, or Dominic and Damien, or Dominic and... Finn or Finn and JD, you know, they could just switch it up. Yeah, any combination of the four. Yeah. Well, and what they could do is JD and Finn could lose the titles, and that's how you do the implosion of that Judgment Day right there. Yeah, I mean, if this was 2000, you know, you could do Rhea and Dom versus whoever. I mean, sure. I mean, you could probably still do that. Rhea can probably kick anyone to I was about to say, she, <laughs> you could probably still do that. Yeah. I mean, she speared Kevin Owens through a barricade. Come on. that That's like one of the best she moments of this year. <laughs> she did spear Kevin Owens to that barricade. That's so, like, uh, how do you... Yeah. Are you wanting to rank matches or rank them? What do you yeah, we can rate them if you want to. Like, what's our I, scale uh, going to be? Ooh, I don't know. Is our scale ever changing? I can't remember. What do we do? Hmm. Uh, with these, I don't... <laughs> I can't remember. I'm back, on, I'm back on my bullshit. So uh, let's do since it's since the typical Survivor Series match is supposed to be five. Let's do out of five for this match. Out of five. Well, yeah. What would you give it? You know, I'm looking at these other matches. And, or we're talking like for the show, or are we talking about just yeah. like as a match all time or anything. Oh, was there only five matches on the card? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we'll just we'll just rate the matches in in order best to worst. Then let's do that. Okay. Uh, do you want to wait until the end to do that, or do you just want to go ahead? Uh. Let's like let's just put this one at number one, and then as we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. We'll move them. Uh. So after this match was over, what happened? We got a backstage segment. Yeah, with uh, Jay Uso and Sami Zayn, and what was it? Was it? It was Sammy. Sammy told Jay, so uh, I, I was told that. All right, Randy isn't here right now. He, I was told he might not be coming. And Jay was like, "Ah, oh, I knew this was gonna happen, man." It's all because of me, man. It's all because of me, Us. It's all because of me, Us. It's my fault. <laughs> Jay was stressing. Yeah, which they're gonna play around with that somewhere, right? What? The the fact that the bloodline in storyline the bloodline is why Randy was on the shelf for a year and a half. Oh, they they better. 
They, dude. Oh, look, I, I, I'm, I'm glad we got Randy Orton return. He returned out of the face. We got the nice like moment. He got his flowers. He got, he got the nice entrance. We'll talk about it a bit more later. But oh, I want heel Randy Orton so fucking bad. When he came out, what version of Randy Orton? What version of Randy? When he made that entrance, what version did I see? Yeah, what version of Randy Orton did you see? I saw, yeah, no, I know what you're le- leading on to. Uh, menace, menace, Hill, Randy Orton. The fucking, yeah, the like, Apex vet- Predator. The yeah, like Orton, the-, the 2009 Randy Orton. That's what I saw. The one who fucking broke into, what, did he break into Triple H's house? Or did Triple H break into his house? Triple uh, H tri- broke into his house. Yes, because he, he fucking punted his family. <laughs> yeah. He punted Ste- then he punt saw... Stephanie. Or did he RKO yeah, he, Stephanie? He RKO'd Stephanie and I think he punted Vince. Yeah, he punted Vince and Shane. Please, WWE, turn Randy heel and don't let him do the RKO. Let him do the punt. That's what they need to do. Heel Randy Orton does not need to do the RKO because the RKO is a spectacle. We no, wait. love the RKO. I think he DDT'd uh, Stephanie, actually, because Triple H was handcuffed to the ropes. And he By did the way, it. that fucking yeah. DDT could be a finisher all on its own. Yeah, it should. Oh, I'm glad, he, I'm glad he can still do the RKO, though. Like, do you know how happy I was when he fucking did the RKO? I'm like, holy shit, he can still do it. It's not gonna, like, I guess it's not gonna threaten his career. So, that's fucking awesome. Maybe he wasn't supposed to, but he just did it anyways. And they're like, eh. Okay, I guess. I guess you can do what you want. You're Randy Orton. Yeah. Oh, no. So, he, he looked ready to do that shit, though. We went from one backstage segment. Did we go straight to another, or did we go to Smith? I think it was uh, that segment, then, like, this was a segment, but it was, like, an ad segment for Ruffles. Mm. And we got the greatest return of the night. Oh, yes. The 54th time, I-95. Southwest, Northeast, WWE, 24, 7-11 champion, R-Truth return. R-Truth is back, baby. And uh, what, it was a... He's like, where have you you been? Yeah. Back here, eating ruffles? (laughs) He's like, like, I've been here the whole time. I never left. (laughs) (laughs) He's such a fucking idiot, man. He's the best comedy character they ever had. I don't think they'll ever be a better one. I know. I, I, it's kind of smart bringing him back in like a segment like that. With, I, I guess a bunch of comedic characters is what it seemed like. Oh because I only only really knew Alpha Academy. Like I know I know that was, what are they? Something deadly? Pretty, pretty deadly. Pretty deadly. Yeah, okay. I don't really know them, but I know of them. Yeah. And... What? Yeah, I don't know that other guy that came in like after our truth. Yeah, I don't know that guy. But <laughs> he's a comedy character. I think he tie or he's like the next closest with Reigns for the twenty four seven title. He's he's just a comedy character. He got okay. put in Alpha Academy. People oh. were wanting Tazawa to get like a a little push, you know, because yeah. he's like he he's good like in the ring and stuff like that. It's just he's only been used for. comedy. You know what would have been hilarious? How they brought Hard Truth back? Have, like, a bunch of guys in the ring about fucking, uh, I don't know, a Fatal Five-Way, uh, Fatal Five-Way Championship match, a Royal Rumble, or a Money in the Bank, or something like that. And just have Hard Truth come out, and then cut, like, a sick-ass, like how he did before, about how he's in the match, and then somebody just has to stop it, <laughs> like, you're not even in the match, and he's just like, Are, mm-hmm. "Oh, my bad, guys." My you bad. weren't even. That's you weren't me. even. You weren't even scheduled to be here tonight, Truth. <laughs> just be like, Truth. You don't even have a WWE contract. Oh, I don't. <laughs> can I get one? <laughs> Do you know where I can find one? No, it's like it's, it's like what uh, I was watching the old Survivor Series before. And the lead up to this one, and it was a, uh, it was like it was whenever Shane McMahon was like running SmackDown and Stephanie was running Raw. This was like 
I think like right before I like started dropping out of wrestling, like before I got back into it. 2016 when AJ Styles. I think it was 17 maybe. Oh, okay. It was 16 or 17. It was one or the other. Was uh was Team Raw Chris Jer, Kevin no. Owens, Braun no. Strowman. Oh. No, I think it was like I don't, Braun Strowman was on it. I'm pretty sure. I think Kevin Owens was on Team SmackDown. I'm pretty sure. No, okay. It was uh, Shane McMahon, The Miz, and some other people. But no, our truth comes in. He's like Shane McMahon. I came to talk to you about getting a contract. Or, or get signed to the SmackDown roster. And he was like, true. You're, you're already on SmackDown. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, that's a relief because Aunt Stephanie McMahon I don't want to work for her, basically. Yeah. <laughs> He's fucking great. I hope, I hope they do some more comedy, some little comedy things. Yeah. He's the best. Then, uh, after this, we got Gunther. Versus the Miz. Uh, ring general. And uh, did you hear the stat? Michael Cole said pretty. It was pretty close to the beginning of this match. He's or it might have been before the match even started. I think it was during Gunther's entrance, actually. That all of Miz's reigns combined yep. don't equal Gunther's one reign. No, there. It's it's barely longer. I think uh, his eight reigns is five hundred ninety two days, and Gunther was five thirty three. Saturday, so it's what is it now? Wednesday, so that's five more days. So he's at five thirty-eight right now. So that's pretty fucking insane. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. And I, I'm not sure who holds the record for like long, just longest time holding the Intercontinental Title. I think it might be the Miz. I will find out. I think it might be the Miz, honestly, because I'm pretty sure the Miz has more combined days than uh, Jericho does. And I don't think Honking Tonk Man had any more reigns than his one record breaking reign. But so combined reigns, uh it looks like Gunther. Oh, just kidding. It looks like Pedro Morales. Oh. With how many? Uh six hundred and seventeen days recorded by W Okay. Is the miss second? Yes, five hundred and ninety two. Okay, yeah. So I was I was almost right. I was right about yeah. the number though. This match though, overall, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, uh I issue. honestly I honestly don't know if I've seen a Gunther match that isn't good. He's just it's like all his matches are kind of the same, but the way that he fucking the way that he ends up winning the match are always great. And it's always it's like always different too. Like I, I think I've seen yeah. him win with power bomb the most probably, but like I've seen him win with the the uh, clothesline. I've seen him win with yeah, the, the Boston Clab Clab. I don't know if I saw that before in Survivor Survivor Series, but that wasn't was, a Boston Crab. That was a fucking lion tamer. Yeah, that was the yeah that was a lion tamer. Yeah, hey, that shit that knee went to the back of his head, and as soon as mid. Started folded. I was like, as soon as oh, he yeah. folded, it was. It reminded me of Chris Jericho. Happened. Yeah, yeah that that was a that was a good match by Gunther and Miz. I I put that second to the women's match, only because it's kind of unfair, but uh, it's just the women's match had more people. There wasn't really any any bad moments in the women's match, so so I put yeah, it I'd, second. I'd agree. I'd put it second. Uh, Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar. Yeah, this I was have... a this was a surprise to me because I thought it was going to be Carlito versus Santos Escobar. Me too. And oh, by the yeah. by the way, I guess we were supposed to be doing our predictions, weren't we? We both predicted Gunther for the last match. Oh yeah, yeah. We uh, I think we both predicted Car this one. Yeah, we both did predict Carlito for this one, and he wasn't even in the fucking match. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we're wrong because Dragon Lee took his place. Whatever that, I don't care. Uh, Why? I, it just makes no sense that Dragon Lee took his place, though. Like Dragon Lee had uh, has nothing to do with the LWF. Yeah, I don't know. I have three words for this match. I don't uh, care. Oh, okay. I was like, what are those three words? 
Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a bad Same. match. It's just, I didn't care. There was yeah. nothing about it that I cared about. No, it I didn't really care either. Survivor Series. Uh, I would agree. It was definitely the weakest link, so it's in last yeah. place. So I put it, I put it third, and then we could just move. Unless yes. you got something else you wanted to say. No, not really. It's like it was a fine match. It's fine, quick match, and it's all it needed to be. But yeah, like you said, it didn't really need to be on Survivor Series. Nope. Uh, uh. Next, we have the WWE Women's World. Champion Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Stark. This was, uh, I think we both pred- just kidding. I know we we both predicted Rhea to retain. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh Rhea's obvious. Cool. I think it's just obvious that Rhea's not. As of now, anyway, no, no one on Raw besides Becky is going to take that title from her. <laughs> like, yeah. who the fuck else besides Becky is going to take it? I thought Zoe Stark, great showing. Yeah, I agree. I, she, I thought she did I pretty good. They could build her up a little bit more. If they made, if they made her just a, a hair bit more legitimate, I might have believed Rhea could have lost. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm saying she needed, I say a hair bit more legitimate. She goes into a couple with some of the top women on Raw. You know what I mean? Goes into what with some of the top women? Goes into some big rivalries with top oh. women. Yeah, yeah, just give her more time. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, like, if they would have done that before they threw, threw her at Rhea Ripley, I may have believed that she could have won. Yeah, because, I mean, she hasn't really done much since the laying out Trish at Payback. Like, you know, uh, I, I just don't think... She won uh, Battle Royal. I think she's got, yeah. Like, I think the talent's there. She just needs a uh, more pedigree. Yeah. Overall, though, I think this is a pretty good match. I agree. And, uh, I, is, I guess this is the thing with, like, every Rhea title match, but there's, like, always trash talking going on in the middle of the match. That's, I yeah. fucking love it. Uh, Rhea reversed her, like, GTS. Oh, yeah, she really caught her knee. Yeah. Now, that was a, that was a kind of cool sequence because it's like uh, Zoe was on her knees and she was like, "Oh, Rhea hit me! Don't be a bitch, you know." And then Rhea just caked her and then picked her up to go for the riptide, and Zoe countered that and like hit a German suplex and got a two count. Then she went for the whatever. What is her finisher called? I don't remember what it's called, but she goes uh, for that. I'm gonna call it the better GTS. Yeah, it's like a 360 GTS, basically. That's literally what it is. Or, yeah, I guess it's a 360. But yeah, she Bria caught her knee, and then she like elbowed her a couple times in the face, hit the riptide. One, two, three. It's over. Bria is still your women's world heavyweight champion. Hell yeah. I want her to hold that thing until WrestleMania 50. Uh, <laughs> I put this match above Dragon Lee versus... But I... Keep it below Gunther versus Miz. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. I'll agree with you. I think it's pretty yeah. close to Gunther versus Miz, but in, in terms of quality, I agree. I, I, if you could, if you could tie two of them, I would tie uh, Gunther and Miz versus uh, this. Yeah, I'd agree. Finally, <laughs> we have. The men's war games match. But where's Randy Orton? Is he coming? I don't know. Is he? I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, and uh, we we both chose the uh, the team, the face team to win this. We chose the faces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the faces. Yeah. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, I really, I don't have, like, anything bad or good to say about this match. This match was like I think it got really interesting when Drew McIntyre came in. Uh at first, I guess, but I I feel like Drew kind of like up until like Randy came back, I feel like after a point Drew just kind of I I feel like a lot of people just kind of vanished. <laughs> yeah, no no no. I'm saying because like when he walked to the ring 
he looked like he was about to kill some people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean by that. He kept giving, uh, like, Jey Uso, like, the fucking dirtiest look. Yeah. Then he gave, like, when he stared down Randy later on in the match, oh, God, that was such a good moment. Well, yeah, they have that history from the WWE yeah. title. Yeah. But, Randy's last uh, WWE title reign, he beat Drew McIntyre for it. Yep. I like the fact that uh, Seth and Cody faced off and they were looking at each other. Or no, Cody got the, got the cowbell and the rope and yeah. Seth grabbed it. And he's like, for one night only? And he's like, one night only. And they shook each other's fuck yeah. <laughs> because you know they had that fucking three, those three absolute banger matches against yeah. each other. Like Cody, Cody won all three, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cody won all three. <laughs> that was we were talking about this when we were recording. Yeah, we were, we were talking about eating losses. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what that's a prime example right there. Seth lost all three of those matches against, but yeah, look he, where Seth Rollins <laughs> is, he's the fucking the face of Raw or supposed to be the face of. Let's see, he lost uh. Yeah, he, what he's he lost that elimination chamber match that he was like easily the most popular and biggest name in. It was for the U.S. title. He didn't need to win, but uh, Logan Paul interfered, but so it set up a match with at WrestleMania against him. But yeah, Seth will just lose. Like if Roman was in that match, even though it's for the U.S. title, they would have Roman win that shit for no reason. I think I think uh, that's I think the thing with Roman Reigns is though. He's he's like something that you only beat if you're gonna be the next guy, you know. Uh, I'm right now, yeah, but I mean, like any time, I think Roman Reigns would have oh, oh, done that. Oh, yeah, 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 like big dog. Yeah, like any any stage yeah. of his career. Yeah, yeah, no, there there would have been a. I hated the Superman stage. Yeah, I hated that. I don't mind this stage right now because I get what. But I hated the Superman stage, where it's everyone like, oh, did. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even fucking see him, and then you're like, oh man, this is a great triple threat. Oh, fuck, it's a fatal four way. Where did the win come from? And then he just gets the pin. It's like he didn't fucking do anything. He hit one Superman punch, and that was it. And then it's just one, two, three. Roman wins. It's like, oh, okay, that was stupid. Yeah, why is it like the the the, the only punch that's like ever been believable to end a match is the Big Show's like KO punch for some reason? And that, and to my in my opinion, the only reason that was ever believable was because I watched him hit it on Dolph Ziggler, and Dolph Ziggler just fucking acted like he died. Yeah, no, I uh, I watched it. What it was No Mercy two thousand eight. And he he hit it on Undertaker, and Undertaker like just completely collapsed. I was like, "Holy fuck!" Undertaker sold that so fucking well. <laughs> like he looked like a literal dead man. Yeah. And Big Show hit like two more on him, and like Undertaker, he was still selling it so well because that motherfucker was not moving. I don't know if you don't sell that punch, it does not look. Yeah. No. Uh. Yeah. No. You got to sell it for sure. There's a lot of people that sell it pretty fucking well, though. There's a lot of good sellers, man. It's just part of wrestling. Yeah. So, we get to a point where it's five on four. It's Judgment Day versus the Faces. The Faces are laid out. Finn hits the Coup de Gras. Dominic hits the Frog Splash. And JD hits the uh, Moonsault. And... Fuck, who all's in the Judgment Day? I guess Drew and Damian were just chilling in the ring when the, uh, they hit all those moves. Uh, they, were they? Damian, uh, Damian put Seth through a table at the Razor's Edge. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. And the other three got hit with it. That's right. Yeah, then, Frog Splash, Moonsault, Coup de Gras. Yeah. Yeah. Then Rhea comes out. And they're gonna cash in on Seth Rollins in the middle match. Middle <laughs> of the fucking match. So the countdown ends and like everyone's staring for Randy and then like 
Yeah, three years of music, kids. <laughs> and she's running, she's written down with a ref. <laughs> Dude, I honestly, there for for half a second, I was thinking, holy shit, they actually cash it. Because she was moving. Dude, that was a, that was just, I was like, if they do cash it in, that would be pretty insane. To just cash it in in the middle of a War Games match. <laughs> yeah. And then. Before they cash it in, I, they count to me. They understand. They oh, count to me. Ba- Damien's face here was so great. He was like, Rhea's? "What the? No, Damien's. He was no, like, no, no, what no, the? Rhea. Oh, Rhea's too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Damien was like, yeah, what the, the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, Damien looked pissed. Yeah, he looked so upset. <laughs> Rhea and the ref looked like <laughs> they had just seen. No, Rhea was like, "Oh, what? <laughs> Son of a bitch!" By the way, there's footage. Uh, Rhea, with this kid, uh, she's had it a couple times where she's like scared him or something like that. She's like, she's like had her back turned and then turned around and. Said, well, he was at Survivor Series and she, she said, uh. The kid said, you're not going to scare me this time. And then she said, oh, yeah? Oh. And then she turned around to walk away. And then she turned back around and went, bye. And the kid jumped, and she said, I got you again, you shit. I was like, damn. She fucking called that kid a little shit. <laughs> what kid? Uh, Just some random kid. She's she's had a couple of, she's had a couple of interactions with him. How does this kid keep? Show- How does this kid make it to so, so many shows? Kid is Mommy this? and daddy must love him. Damn! What what a, what a lucky kid! He gets to get scared shitless by fucking Rhea Ripley and get called a little shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, guys would pay good money for that. <laughs> but yeah, Randy gets back and uh, he just I- cleans house. Oh, I love this. I love this entrance. It's so good. It's so good to see. He fucking slams the cage door and then it just bounces back. Bounces yeah. back open. He's like, oh, that ruined that. <laughs> he slammed that shit so hard it didn't. Oh, uh, yeah. WWE, you need to make better doors for your fucking cage. <laughs> make ones that actually stay closed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, fuck. Damn it, Randy, that got ruined. Then he did like two two scoop slams. Yes, I love the scoop slams. Oh, what about the moment where they all did the apron DDT? Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna bring that up. Everybody did. DDT. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, I was just that whole time. I was just like, it's so good to have Randy back. It's so fucking good. Yeah, I missed it. I missed him. Him and Cody got to have a good embrace. Yeah, and uh, the way it ended. Oh well, I guess there's uh, still a, a, one more spot to talk about when uh, JD's running up the cage trying to get away from everyone well, I because was talk about Randy. Randy was gonna RKO Jey Uso, and then uh, oh, I don't remember who, this. Dominic, Dominic, yeah, no, Randy was gonna hit the RKO on, and Jay, Jay was on the ground, and Randy turned his head and looked at Jay. And he started banging his fist on the ground, and then he went to RKO him, and then Jay's like, they kind of stopped, and they stared at each other, and then Dominic went to run at Randy, and Jay super kicked him, and then I think Randy RKO Oh, yeah, no, no, I know what you're talking about now, yeah, yeah, because I remember Jay super then, kicking Dominic. And then they forced the RKO spot, which, I don't know, I don't know how, I, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I didn't. I thought it was just kind of meh. Yeah, I mean, I I I thought it was good still. I just I'd seen the RKO again. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, it was it was good, but it was like ah, uh, they're gonna like overplay that. They're gonna make it seem like it was a lot cooler than it. was. Oh yeah, I mean, they do that with any RKO. Props to fucking JD for just jumping off the cage. He was gonna land on his fucking chest no matter what happened. So props to him for doing. JD was pretty good in this match. Yeah, he uh it makes me want to see 
an amount of him. Yeah, well, you actually know who this guy is now. Yeah, it's not J.D. McGuffin like I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's J.D. McDonough, motherfucker. McDonough, Get it right. not McGuffin. It should be J.D. McGuffin. Yeah, the uh, best moment of the match was obviously Brandy returning. Um, yeah. So where would you rank this match? Uh, I'd put it second. Yeah, I was about to say. I'd put yeah. put this at second. And, uh, just uh, like as a, as a match, like just purely a match, second to, for the moments as well. Like if you're including Randy's return in that first, obviously. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I guess they got us. Those sons oh. of bitches got, us, didn't they? They did. I was uh, you know, I felt like that the show was like, I, I don't know when the War Games match ended. I was like. It, it's it, it's over. Like there's there has to be more, right? And I was just like kind of sitting there, and like just Cody's music is playing for like forever, and I'm like, okay, I guess I guess this was it. <laughs> then you hear. I don't know. Did that actually sound good? I feel like it was either way too loud and annoying. Uh, it sounded I- exactly like. How cult of personality sounds. Yeah, I'm gonna go because. with. It sounded just like it. So. It sounded exactly like it. Thank you. They, and, yeah. they needed a new guy for the band. I'll be. CM Punk makes his ten year return. Well, I guess it wasn't exactly ten years. It was like almost like, close to it. Yeah, he, close to the, ten years. R- Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble 2014 was the last event. That. It's been at least ten years since he's been in Chicago WWE. Yeah. So I mean, ro- come Royal Rumble, it'll be ten years. So like, yeah. By by two months, he missed ten years. So basically, ten years. Ten years since CM Punk stepped foot in a WWE arena. Uh, I enjoy seeing him back, but I'm also scared. To see him. I'm scared. I'm scared of what they're gonna do with him. Yeah. What What do you think they're gonna do with him? I don't know what they can do with him. With you, I think Seth's gonna drop the title to him. Really? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> think about it. Think about it like this. Uh, Discovery was it Discovery Plus paid AEW like ten million dollars to make another show for CM Punk and put a title on him. What makes you think they won't do the same thing? Or it was like a billion dollars. They paid them an absurd amount to make a whole new show and put a title on it. What makes you think WWE do the same? Do the same thing? Uh, why, why would they pay that much money just for CM Punk to fucking be champion? Because the show that CM Punk was on, uh, I think it's Collision drew just as much revenue as Dynamite did, and since he left, they haven't even drawn close to the same amount. Like, it's been almost... Oh, so you're saying saying that uh, Raw would make more money with CM Punk as champion? Yeah. 100%. Probably. Honestly. So, I think Seth is losing the World Heavyweight Champion. Do you think Punk's going to win the Rumble? I fucking hope he doesn't. I want Guther to win the Rumble. I just just want Guther to win. I don't fucking know who else can win. I hope Punk doesn't come in. And I don't believe he's as bad as everybody claims he is. Because it really seems like he cares about what makes the most sense of a so I hope he doesn't come in demanding, oh, I want this, and I want this, I want this to happen. I hope he realizes he's not sure. Like, there's younger guys that need their shot. Yeah. And hopefully he's not as bad as and tries to come in and just take over. I don't think he is, but maybe he is. I really hope not. I really hope he wouldn't come back just to do that. I want him to come back, and I don't really want to see 
I want to see him as I want to see him in a couple good like really good rivalries and then he and then he can uh, John Cena versus Punk please you just like cut out a ton there oh I want to see CM Punk have a couple good rivalries then just retire I don't want to really see him as a champion so sort of like what well, Edge is an AW now, but sort of what Edge was doing in his like second stint with WWE, like he came yeah. back and just had a few rivalries and dipped. Yeah, but I want Punk's rivalries to be half a year kind of rivalry. Okay, you know? longer rivalries. Yeah, yeah. Yes, not like just to fucking get it solved in a PLE cycle. Like mm-hmm. maybe I want to see one with John Cena, one more with Cena. When. Mm. When do you think Cena would have to, like... I I mean, uh, I guess if it's a six-month feud, they wouldn't need to, like, be there every week, so never mind. Yeah. I'm sure Cena could make time to come, like, once or twice a month if they were doing a program like that. Yeah. Or have Punk cut a promo. No. Have Punk cut a promo on Cena. And then, like, two weeks later... Then, like, two weeks later, have seen a... But, like, on a... On, like, a video message thing. Yeah, yeah. And then have Punk respond, like, the next week. And then be like, Listen here, you sack of shit. You can't even face me. And then, like, the next week, Cena could come back. But, like, have Punk go out there to cut another pro. John Cena's a piece of shit. And then it... That's the whole storyline. John Cena's a piece of shit. <laughs> Every time you were chanting Cena sucks, you were really chanting CM Punk. Where the fuck are my ice cream bars? That's all of CM Punk. Where the fuck are my ice cream bars? <laughs> and then, the final rivalry I want to see Punk. Are you ready? What? Punk is about to retire. Okay. All right, let me set the scene. Punk is about to retire. He's emotional. He's thanking everybody for the opportunity to come back and entertain us. One. Can I take a guess of who this is gonna be? Just let me finish setting okay. the scene here. No. <laughs> and then, as he's putting down the microphone, he kisses both hands and puts his hands up. To... Whose music hits? Jeff Hardy's music hits. No. No. Dude. And that was a place I was going, but you got no chance. No chance. No. no. Vince Worth, man. Vince Worth nemesis. His arch fucking nemesis. And then, to make everything better, we're going to have a 75 or 79 or 80 year old versus CM Punk. And who's the, who is the special Who's going to be the special guest referee? Is the special referee going to be Jeff Hardy? No, it's not going to be Jeff Hardy. I want it to be, but he's like in oh, he's so... like a long age AEW contract. Uh, long age? How, how much longer is Jeff Hardy going to be fucking wrestling? How's that dude not... How's his body got, not uh, dead already? I think, he's got like a, I think he's got like a two-year deal. With... Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah, okay. so he's got like a year left on it, I think. Uh, is it John Cena? It's time to play the game. What's your point? The two guys who screwed him out of the company, the two guys who made him leave the company, are the re are gonna be his final rivalries. Triple H, special guest referee. Who's he gonna side with? CM Punk, the guy who he made the men's with, or Vince McMahon? Uh. The ultimate villain. Vince slash slash his hurt. father-in-law. Slash his father-in-law. And then, as Punk is about to get the three count, whose music hits? Gong. What the Gong. fuck is happening? And then, you hear, <laughs> and the writing's on the... <laughs> Jeff Hardy out to the Undertaker's music! And then Jeff Hardy comes out, and Beat CM Punk for the WWE title. Wait, wait. Jeff Hardy 
So, so the Undertaker's gong hits. Jeff Hardy's music. It's yeah, it's, 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 they, they throw everybody. By the so, way, CM Punk. No, the Undertaker's not actually there, though. Jeff Hardy was just no, using no, it. Not at all. To, to yeah, scare it, see? Just using it. Yeah. And uh, CM Punk nor Vince McMahon are WWE champion. It's just when Jeff Hardy wins, Reigns has to and hand him the title. I <laughs> He's see. gotta come out to the ring and just <laughs> like, well, you beat CM Punk in a match you weren't in. So here you go. I thought CM Punk was the WWE champion in this case. No, no, not at all. <laughs> How does Jeff Hardy win the title? <laughs> Just um, because he beat the, because he beat the best in the world at the WrestleMania. Best in the world at WrestleMania in the main event. And guess what? The match that. So hey, keep in mind, it's it's just a match. Do you do you CM think Punk CM Punk will get his WrestleMania main event ever? Uh, since it's a two night WrestleMania, there's a possibility. I think he will. He be happy with a night one main event? Does he care about a WrestleMania main event anymore? Uh, I feel like it's probably something that he feels like would make things right. I do too. I mean, I think he did deserve it. So, like, and- WrestleMania 29 should have been Punk versus Undertaker. Yeah, I agree. That would have been. I, I think it was the best match, so. Was... Um. I mean, but, oh, I mean they should have just there. made, like, all the some of the good Undertaker matches main events because, like, the streak was a bigger thing than title matches half the time at WrestleMania. Yeah, no joke. Like, I'm glad uh, Sean versus main event for uh, uh, 26. Yeah, yeah it should have been for 25. should have been. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the they title matches that followed it, oh, didn't hold a candle. Yeah. The crowd was so out of it, too. <laughs> they they yeah. used all their fucking energy on the Sean Taker match. But, yes, yeah, so, uh, Vince McMahon. And then when Jeff Hardy comes out, he challenges CM Punk to a TLC match, which he wins, and he gets the WWE Championship. So, Punk beats Vince. Jeff beats Punk in a TLC match, and Jeff wins the WWE Reigns because Roman Reigns just hands it to him. So because you just want so so you just want him to beat him in a TLC match. So Jeff Hardy is no longer winless in TLC matches. Yes, and he's now going to be the. <laughs> Why not make it a TLC Hell in a Cell match so he has wins in Hell in a Cell matches too? Well, the Hell in a Cell match has never been. The Hell in a Cell match has never been his match, so. Oh, yeah. The TLC was in 2009, apparently, even though he was 0-4 yeah. at that time. Oh, <laughs> wait, he did win a TLC match. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. When? With Matt. When? With the tag team titles at WrestleMania. That, that, was, that was a ladder match, wasn't it? Oh, son of a bitch. I thought it was a TLC. Nah, dude, look. The Hardys, they're good at ladder matches. They're fucking terrible at TLC matches. Fuck yeah. yeah. Once you start throwing <laughs> Yeah, once you start throwing tables and chairs in there, they don't fucking know what to do. They're like, oh, let me Jeff's just like, let me climb the tallest fucking ladder and swamp on this motherfucker through a table, lay myself out for the next goddamn twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's like once you add tables, he's just I gotta jump through fuck. Yeah, it's like it's like oh oh Edge is like perfectly on this ladder that's wedged between the ring and the barricade. Let me jump off this tall ladder through. It's so oh I'm, fuck, he moved. <laughs> Better jump anyways. Nah, uh, he put Edge through that one. I'm uh, the WrestleMania 23 moment. Oh, I think. Yeah, that's true. I don't remember if Frog splashed him or Swantoned him, but either way, Edge went through that ladder. Or he might have done the like the little bomb thing, like light drop type thing he did. Yeah. Kind of like the boom drop from Kofi. They always, yeah. like, Jeff just leaped over the ladder. He did a lot of cool shit with ladders, to be fair. He did do a lot of cool shit with ladders. So. And anytime in still cage matches, too, Jeff Hardy, dude. Anytime he gets to the top, that motherfucker would just, like, jump back down into the ring instead of escaping the cage. He did not give a fuck about winning matches. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he missed almost every single one of those, too. How much? It was a... At a Survivor Series, 
It was O one. I think it was O one, and it was a uh, Hardy's versus Dudley's. And first of all, Matt Hardy just straight up Matt just leaves Jeff. Fucking, he just yeah. escapes the cage. Like when Jeff's down and out, like Jeff Jeff has no chance. I'm like, what the fuck, Matt? You just made this a handicap, man. Yeah, and fucking and uh, Jeff some... to the top, and they're like, come on. and then yeah. Jeff's like, no, whisper in the wind, bitches, and then no, somehow there's a there's a table. Like somehow a table got in the ring and a Spike Bubba, Dudley, I think, put it in. Probably, and or it might have been a Stacy. It's when Stacy Kubler was with the uh, Dudleys. Oh yeah, and Lita was out there. I do remember that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Bubba was laying on it, and Jeff was just like, "Oh yeah, it's my chance." Swanton misses. They pin him. They fucking win the match. I'm like, well, Matt, you can't really blame him for that. You kind of left him in the ring alone, so. Yeah, you you know. And also, can't. why why it like like once you escape the cage, aren't you technically like you've a, you're like out of the match? So like, why don't you just climb back in? I don't know why it wouldn't be if you escape the cage, you win regardless if one or two people make it. Out. Yeah, I don't know. Because if you pin, you win. Like, why why is it not elimination that way? Yeah, or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Still cage tag team still still cage matches are weird, and I'm glad they don't really do them anymore. Yeah, me too. Well, we do one more thing. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, we do, we do, and we missed it last week. We did miss it last week. So, our week twelve records going into week twelve were eighty five and seventy nine. That was my record. Yours was one hundred and one and. For week 12, we both went 11 and 5. Yes, we did. And then I do a thing every week where, uh, well, I guess we didn't go over week 11 either. Oh, well, who cares? Just yeah, piece that's together it. stuff. Nobody yeah. actually cares. It's in the past. Like, if you're watching this, you probably watch the volume. So, you know, you know what yeah. happened. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, I do a thing every week. I have a way to earn week 12, my 108. Going into week 13, 96 and 84, yours truly. And yours is 100. And, so congratulations on winning. Yeah, 112 and I'm catching up. What was I, 112 and what? 68. Yeah, 112 and 68. Yeah. Hey. I am I am a full week ahead of you, but it's not over. Yeah, it's not over till the fat lady gets until the fat lady gets shot. Is that what you said? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, shot in the head. Get shot in the head. Hey, that's one way to do it. That's some uh, Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland type shit. Yeah, buddy. All right, so starting off, with taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, who do you got? Uh, the the Seahawks versus the Cowboys. I'm going with the Cowboys, even though I kind of don't want them to win. Yeah, I am too. Uh, the Cowboys and the Dolphins same are the same team where they can't beat they can't beat teams with a positive, but they can beat up on teams with negative negative record. Have the Cowboys not beaten any teams with a positive record? Pretty sure they haven't. They're eight and three. Have they? Have they really not? I really don't think so. Think about it. They they've already played the Giants. They've played the Giants twice. They've played the Commanders. Once. Uh. Oh yeah, they beat. Okay. Yeah, they beat the Patriots. They beat the Jets. Uh. I don't know who they else they beat. The Bills. Well. We're just gonna, you know what? You know what? I love the Cowboys. I'm gonna go out of my way. I'm trying to look at their schedule. I don't think that it was the NFL. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so they they beat the Giants. They beat the Jets. They lost to the Cardinals. They beat they, they beat lost. the Patriots. Uh, uh, they lost to the 49ers. They beat the Chargers. They beat the Rams. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, you're right. All their wins are against fucking. Teams with a negative record. Oh my god. 
the Seahawks are six and five. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm picking the Seahawks. Okay. I'm just be, the just because they have a positive record? I don't think they'll beat a team with a positive record. Really and truly don't. Hey, the Seahawks beat the Lions, so you know they can beat a team with a positive record. They can. <laughs> they can. The the Lions have been playing bad. I'll I mean, they the beat the Lions some credit. The Lions are good. The Lions might make it to the Super Bowl but sometime soon. The Lions, okay, sometime soon. I was about to say, the Lions have been playing good team playing bad. Yeah, no, I don't think they're going to make it this year, but maybe soon. <laughs> Uh, we got Chargers Patriots. Oh, uh, I'm going with the Chargers. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with the Pats. Okay, I don't know how many times you picked the Patriots, but you want me it's... to explain my reasoning? Sure. So, Bill Belichick. It's been rumored Bill Belichick is probably getting after fired after this season. Yes. And it's been rumored that Brandon Staley is going to be fired probably before the season's over. Oh, this is the shit about if, if Bill Belichick gets fired and uh, Brandon Staley gets fired, the Chargers are going to hire Bill Belichick to be their coach. I think Bill Belichick is going to beat the fuck out of the Chargers to show them that he can be a good coach. <laughs> So I'm picking the Pats. Okay. I, I, I don't know why. I feel like the Pats are points, the most points against the Chargers than they will ever score ever again. Probably. Honestly, the Chargers defense fucking sucks. Points. They'll probably drop more points in this game than they've scored the rest of the fucking season. <laughs> oh, uh, God. We got Cardinals. We got Cardinals Steelers. Oh. Oh. Going with the, I'm just going to go with the Steelers. Me too. Uh, the Steelers' offensive coordinator fired, by the way. Uh, is that okay? Their offensive coordinator is their offense going to be able to move the ball? Well, their offense wasn't able to move the ball with him coordinating, so probably <laughs> they'll probably look better. Their offensive yeah. coordinator was a guy third. On like a third and eight, he's called run up the middle. It's like you're on your own side of the field. It's third and eight. Why are you calling? He he didn't make a lot of sense. Matt Matt Condona or whatever. He yeah, didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, we got Colts Titans. Going with the Colts. Me too. Uh, this will be a sneakily good game. Broncos Texans. Okay, yeah, I'm going with the Texans, but I don't know. The Broncos have been managing to pull wins out their ass lately, so. I am also going with the Texans. I don't think the Broncos are a good team, but I also don't think they're bad. They were bad, but now they're But I think the Texans are going to. Yeah, they were bad now. I don't fucking know what they are. <laughs> yeah, they're five in a row. I know. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Lions, Saints. I'm going with the Lions, baby. Same. Falcons, Jets. Falcons. Are you going to do it again? I'm going to do it again. Oh, yay. Aaron Rodgers has been cleared to practice. When is he coming back? I don't know. Tim Boyle is a sh- I'm so glad. Tim Boyle is statistically the worst ever played in college or professional. He's he's statistically you know, the worst what? Uh, quarterback to ever play in college. College or the NFL? Holy shit. Yeah, you know, he had like <laughs> one touchdown. To like and one touchdown and like 16 picks. Damn. How? Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> I don't think he was drafted. I think he was an undrafted. Yeah, I would hope not. He, what? Yeah, because that means the Packers would have drafted, but because he was their backup. How do you throw? How, how's drafted. how's that your fucking ratio? I don't know, man. I have no idea. But he's it. But he's so. That makes uh, why? Why did I never get fucking 
the contract to anything. Because you never played any collegiate sport. Yeah, but still, what the fuck? One touchdown to 16 <laughs> interceptions? Like You could probably do that. Fuck. Yeah, I could probably do better than that. You could throw like a screen or some shit. Like I, could, I could throw like at least <laughs> at least two touchdowns and less yeah. interceptions. Yeah, you could do because I'll uh, I'll only throw screens and checkdowns. Yeah, you could do one of those shovel passes where the running back's already in motion. You just kind of throw the ball into his chest and just let him do all. Yeah, you could do a couple of those and get a couple. I could just run like those uh pass jet sweeps, like we just casually toss the ball to him, and you know the yeah. wide receiver does all the work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dolphins Commanders. Going with the Dolphins. Going, yeah, I already knew you were. I am too. Uh, Panthers, Bucks. Going with the Bucks. Me too. Uh, Frank Reich was fired. That checks out. Yeah. Uh, 49ers, Eagles. How many coaches will the Panthers go through in the next few years? Who knows? No idea. What was the next match? What was the next 49ers, uh, Eagles. Oh. Game of the week, probably. I'm going to go with the 49ers, though. Me too. So, uh, some Eagles player who I can't name, some Eagles player said uh, there was a complaining and crying after the Eagles beat the 49ers in the playoff. And he said that now is their chance to the outcome of that game would have been no different if Brock Purdy wouldn't have gotten hurt. All I have to say to that is bull fucking shit. Yeah. When you have Christian McCaffrey as your emergency backup QB, that game is already just done. Yeah, no, that was, it was bad. Yeah, if Purdy wouldn't have got hurt, that game probably... The Eagles still may have won, but it would have been maybe by like... It wouldn't have been by anything crazy. No, no, it would have been yeah. probably a one possession game either way. Yeah, I think the Eagles are going to get exposed by the 49ers, and hopefully. You keep saying I they're going to get exposed, but they're they're 10 and 1 right now. Yeah, but the 49ers, I feel like, are the best paper right now. The I'd Eagles agree. have had the luxury of very lush schedule. I think yeah, they're the in like. had one of the easiest schedules in the league. So they played the Patriots. Uh, they should have lost to. Them. They played the Vikings. They should have lost to the Vikings. <laughs> they destroyed the Bucks. They almost lost to the Commanders. They beat up on the Rams. They lost to the Jet. How did they lose to the Jet? They beat up on the Dolphins. They almost lost to the Commanders again. Yeah, the Commanders always play them close for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I'm pretty sure. So the final score of the Cowboys. Did you watch that game? The Cowboys game? I saw the end. Was it even close? What do you mean? Like Dak Prescott is notorious for like throwing like 500 yards and like four touchdowns when the game's completely out of room. Was that the case? Because the score was 28-23. Yeah, no, uh, the Cowboys were, like, they were they were in the red zone, I'm pretty sure, when the game ended. So, it's just, they couldn't get the ball in the end zone to win. Oh, okay. All right. So, they could have lost to the Cowboys. They probably, actually, I'll say they, they, they beat They didn't let the Chiefs score in the good on them. Uh, it looks like they could have lost to the Bills. So, you're oh, no, the bill. The bill. Uh, the Bills were up that game, and they let up a goal goal for the Eagles to take it into overtime. So I don't know. I feel like the Bills probably kind of blew that game. I didn't actually watch it though. So. Yeah, the Bills scored seventeen points. Seventeen points win. And seventeen points in the second. Oh, in the second. Seventeen. Seventeen points in the fourth quarter. Oh. Yeah, so they just kind of blew it in the fourth quarter of the Bills' did. Yeah, I I do believe that. 
I don't know. I think they're the best team. I don't care what the Eagles' record is. I think the 49ers are the best team in the NFC. I also think the 49ers are the best team in the NFC right now. Uh, Browns versus Rams. Oh, I think I'm going to go with the Rams. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Chiefs, Packers. Are, are you going with the Browns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Chiefs, Packers. I'm going with the Chiefs. You son of a bitch. Are you saying that no, because you're I'm also going? Right. No. The Chiefs? No, the Packers, baby. Really? Go, Pack, go. Yeah. All right, yeah. Hey, they, they, they're on a win streak right now. They are. Four and four out of the last five. Oh, yeah, baby. And then they, what was that one loss to the Broncos? Shut the fuck up. No, they're also, the Broncos are also on a streak, so I mean. Can you really yeah, say I mean, anything? That was before the the streak started with Bay. <laughs> oh, it started with yeah. them. Yeah, it starts with the Packers. That was that was like seventy. There's seventy. Wait, they beat the Packers. Yeah, okay. Did they beat the the Packers game was before the Chiefs game, before the Broncos played the Chiefs? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Okay, those must have been like back to back weeks. Anyway, what's this? What's the next game? Oh no, I'm checking now because I'm oh. curious. Uh, so they lost to the Raiders. Oh no, no. Okay, the Broncos beat the Bears. Lost mm-hmm. to the Jets. Okay. Lost to the Chiefs. Beat the Packers. Beat the Chiefs. Beat the Bills. Beat the Vikings. Beat the Browns. Maybe that was why, because the, the Packers game was between the two Chiefs Broncos game for some reason. I don't know yeah. why they do that. I don't, I don't know why they. I, close. I, me either. I don't get why they do that type of shit. I like. I like week sixteen rival. Or week sixteen. Week sixteen. What? Week sixteen division games. Or like, and then like week two division games. Yeah, I mean, I don't really care when the division games are. I just don't like like the the same as that teams playing like that close together. Because I literally saw this game two weeks ago. Why the fuck am I seeing it again right now? I one time in Madden, I had three division, I had three division games all stacked on top of each other. Yeah, that happens a lot, in Madden, for me. I played, I played the Bears in week one, I the Lions in week two, and I played the in week three. Yeah, it was I, pretty fucking <laughs> insane. Uh, final game: Bengals Jaguars. The Battle of the Big Cats. Chiefs Packers is a Sunday night game. That's weird. It is, yeah. Seven twenty, baby. Uh, okay, what Bengals and who? Jags. Uh, I'm going with the Jags. Yeah. Uh, do you have a Super Bowl pick? Oh, 49ers and. Uh, who do I want to go with in the AFC right now? Oh, uh, I might just. Go Ravens, I guess. I feel like I've done forty nine. Fucking kidding me? What? I literally just wrote down forty nine ers versus Ravens. Yeah, for me. Huh. I think that's so. the second time we've done the same one. I doubt. I doubt we've had many more than that. If we have had any more. Uh, let's just make a couple little wild. Instead of a, uh, wait, I got to number this real. 11, 12, 13. So, instead of two score predictions, let's predict how many points the Patriots... You want to guess how many the Patriots are going to score? Oh, I'm going to say 17. I'm going to say 31. Okay. I'll be impressed. It'll it'll give you a lot of false hope. (laughs) Yeah, that's actually what I need. And then uh I don't know, you wanna you wanna do a score prediction on 49ers? 49ers Eagles, um Ooh, actually we could do Seahawks Cowboys because I did pick that. Uh we can do whichever. Let's do let's do Seahawks Cowboys because I did pick that. Yeah. I'm gonna say the Cowboys I'm gonna say they win twenty four to twenty. I'm gonna say I'm going to say 
But the Seahawks, yeah, okay. Yeah. We we predicted almost the same score, but we did. reversed outcomes. Yes, reversed outcomes. Uh, Here's one more little... So, I want you to pick between these... Are you ready? These what? Uh, these two players. Oh, okay. This is this is your favorite. Oh fuck! I forgot what page posted this. Oh no! Now I'm embarrassed. Oh man! So this is gonna be one of those where the good stats are actually the bad player, and the the bad stats are the good player. That game. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, where uh, last it. time it was fucking I don't even remember who the good player was, but Jamarcus Russell had better stats than whoever the fuck it was. Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, it's Jimmy G. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh no, where is it? It's lost. It's lost uh, in time. It might be lost in time. It can't be though. Man. It's lost. Oh, I found it. Okay. This is for this year, okay? Okay. Player A has 21 receptions, 190 yards, one touchdown, and has played 11 games. Okay. Player B has seven receptions, 209 yards, five touchdowns, and has played 11 games. Okay. Re- repeat the first one, Sats. How many catches did they have? 21. 21. And how many yards? 190. 190. You said one touchdown? The, the second one? Second one, seven catches, 209 yards, five touchdowns. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm picking the second one. You picked the second one? Yeah, he had more. Of, he, the only thing he didn't have more of was catches. Who gives, who gives a fuck about catches if it ain't producing shit? <laughs> okay. Player A is Quentin Johnston, the Chargers' first round wide receiver. <laughs> Player B is cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys, Darren Bland. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cornerback. Yeah, that's pretty he, bad. He's got five touchdowns. Apparently, jeez, dude's fucking balling. I don't yeah. know if they're all sixes. If they're all they what? Might be. I oh, said, pick I don't sixes. Know if they're all yeah. Wouldn't they have to be? Uh, unless they're oh like recovered fumbles. fumbles and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fumble recoveries. Yeah. Who the fuck knows? No, they're pick sixes. Damn. This dude's just a because pick six the, master, in the last apparently. Five games, in the last five games, he has three. Three pick sixes? Damn. Yeah. He has one against the Rams, one against the Panthers, and one against one. That's in the last five. Why is this dude just a pick six master? Yeah. He had... Yeah, no, that's it. Still, yep, it's... seven interceptions, five touchdowns. Pretty fucking crazy, if you ask. That is crazy. Yeah, I feel bad. Uh, the char. Did you watch the Packers Chargers game at all? No. Oh, uh, the the wide receiver I named, he dropped a game winning touchdown for the, for the oh. Chargers. Wow. Yeah. And he was yeah. their number one draft pick, awesome. Or their first round draft pick, awesome. Yeah. Great, oh, wow. great Arkansas, draft in LA. Arkansas's basketball team upset number seven. Wow, you heard it here first. Arkansas beat Duke. Arkansas beat Duke. Arkansas national champion. Here we go. Arkansas is gonna gonna go all the way. They're gonna win the. They're gonna, ma- they're they're gonna, gonna win, win March NBA. Madness. They're going to win March Madness. They're going to win the NBA champion. Yes. They're going to they're going to kick a goal. What what are they ranked right now? They were Arkansas. Yeah. I think are they still unranked. ranked? No, I think they're unranked. They lost like three games. They were like they're ranked not. literally the other day. Uh 
You're like 21. I, well, I say the other day. This was probably like a week ago at this point. Uh, going into the Duke game, they were up. Unranked, okay. They when they beat Duke. They lost number 14. They lost to number 14, Carol- Carolina. They were okay. ranked 20. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that checks out. They lost Carolina, though. They yeah. fucking suck. Who gives a fuck if they beat Duke? Who gives a fuck if they beat the number 7 when they couldn't even beat the number 14? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Going to the Super Bowl. Just because they couldn't beat the 1 in 5 Broncos doesn't mean anything. Because they can beat the fucking 9 and Lions or 8 and 1 Lions, whatever they were. 2. 8 and 2 Lions. Yeah, they could beat the 10 and 1 Eagles right now if they wanted yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't. They just don't want to see Arkansas. Or <laughs> wait, the Packers. <laughs> Packers, the Packers, the Packers just don't want to see Arkansas. Yeah, the Packers do not want to see the Arkansas. Oh, <laughs> uh, did you hear Arkansas hired? Uh, you know, is back in Arkansas. What? Bobby Petrino is oh. back in Arkansas. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's the offensive coordinator for the. Okay. Hide the blondes <laughs> and the Harleys, damn it, Bob. This is kind of a bit off topic, so. Oh, yeah, I guess we should probably end this. Yeah, it, uh, we'll be back talking about some something else next time, though. But you can listen to this uh, show on Spotify, uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast, YouTube, if you're not already watching it there, and at the Red Arrow. And yeah. This has been Survivor Series and our NFL Week 13 predictions. Getting close to playoff time, baby. Oh, yeah. And you know what that means. That means when the playoffs come, that means you have to go back and listen to Episode 2 and listen to me listen to me talk about Jurassic Park. Oh, you just had to get it, it in. I did it again. <laughs> I did it again. I snuck it in there. Nobody saw it. Not even me. Not even me. I fucking forgot about it. <laughs> you forgot about my one bit that I do. <laughs> yeah. Other than your ending. Oh, yeah. Speaking of ending. <laughs>